Anchor recovered the last part of the audio, so here's the full podcast, guys. I can't believe they actually recovered it. Hello, LPG Joe. How are you doing, man? What's going on, my man? Thanks so much for having me, man. Thank you for coming on. I don't think you realize you were probably the Giants fan, man. So thank you for coming on. I'm a relatively small channel, so it means a lot. Nah, you know what? No problem, especially during this hard time. You know, everybody's uh, everybody's going a little stir crazy. So doing stuff like this is uh, is not only my pleasure, but it's it's probably needed. I I completely agree with you there, man. Like people are bored out of their minds. There's absolutely nothing to do, and I've been like sort of trying to get some collabs going with you know fans, other content creators, and whatnot, just because there's nothing to talk about, and I know. You know, at least with really, really big Giants fans that would usually be doing something with the off season right now. It's dry, so they need it. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, look, you 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 keep doing what you're doing and, and reaching out to fans. And and to be honest with you, you you could reach out to players as well because they're just as 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 bored. And, you know, I don't mean you and I are not saying bored like like, you know, we shouldn't be happy that we have a home and a this and a that. I, I don't want to, you know, downplay that. But yes, being bored and safe is okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree with you there. Not to downplay the situation as a whole. I agree exactly. with you there. Exactly. But I think people that are listening, if they can't catch that, I don't know if they, uh, I don't know if they should be on the internet if they couldn't <laughs> catch the content. That's a, that's a very valid point there, man. I don't know if you were watching the, um, the replay of Super Bowl 42. <laughs> I didn't even realize it, but I saw yeah, you in the crowd. Like, yeah. What in the? World? How long? <laughs> like, how long has this guy been going to games? Yeah, that's actually uh, that right there. And how can I afford it? Are the two major questions I get all the time. Ah, uh, well, I guess the second one doesn't really pop into mind because there's there's fans of like all different like economic backgrounds, especially exactly. with the Giants. So I'm like, that doesn't pop into mind. What pops into mind is how goddamn long. For me, time is more more of the thing more than money. It's like, where's the time? Yeah, no no question. I mean, I'm sure you're going to ask me that, so we'll get into that. YouTube, it's your boy, no name. You guys know me as Kush now. I think I'm going to start using that, actually. But I'm back at it with another Giants collab video for you guys. I know some of you might be bored, as me and my guests were talking about beforehand. Welcome aboard. To probably a guy a lot of you know is the Giants fan, the license plate guy. What's up, Kush? Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. No problem, man. No problem. Thank you for coming on. Uh, and like, first things first, I guess for those of you that might not know you, license plate guy, who are you exactly? <laughs> I'm I'm real. I can tell you that. Uh, so <laughs> license plate guy, license plate guy actually has a name. It's Joe. But uh, I don't mind being called LPG or license plate guy. I mean, uh, I've been I've been used to it for so many years now. It just comes secondhand. Um, uh, I'm actually, like you said, just a big just a big Giants fan, like everybody else out there. I hate when there, you know, there are other fans out there that think they're better than another fan. I've never thought that. Um, I, I, maybe I'm in the public eye a little bit more. Maybe I have access a little more than some people. But, uh, you know, I've, I've earned that right after, after, you know, all these years of being a fan. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a physical education teacher. I'm an athletic director in New York. Um, my pseudo uh, celebrity license plate guy is a, is a totally separate life from my, my real job. So, which is kind of funny. People have no idea that I actually do have a job, but <laughs> you, you got to afford to go to this, go to these games. So yeah, I need a job like everybody else. Exactly. So, He's yeah, just a regular guy, this guy. Yeah. Just a regular guy, man. I've been, listen, I've been doing this thing a long time. Uh, just like you guys, you know, back in high school, junior high school, elementary school. I remember my dad, my grandfather, I remember everybody taking us to games you know, as a giant fan, you're bred into the family. So if if you're old enough to walk, shoot before that, your butt's going to a game no matter what. You sit out in the cold no matter what. So, you know, I've been doing it a very long time. I, I don't think I missed a home game in like 40 years. But, you know, home and away, this this would be my 20th year coming up this year. My God. 20, 20 years of just going to straight Giants game home and away? Every game, no matter what. 
home and away. This is me. Did my, I'm done with 19. This will be my 20th this year. That is absolutely amazing, man. That's first of all, we established she's a regular guy, but I, I just want to say I do like to appreciate the fans that go above and beyond. And I want to say, you know, I want to kind of give that appreciation to you. 20 years is a lot of time, guys. Like that's dedication. He definitely withstood some terrible New York Giants years. And yeah. he was definitely in there for the great ones, too. So that's that's what you call dedication right there. 20 years is very yeah, it's long. Funny, it's, funny you, it's funny you say that because, you know, what would I do if I was going, like, for 50 years, which I'm not. What if I was mm-hmm. doing for, like, 50 years, though, and you got to experience that one Super Bowl? You know, it would be worth it. I got to be honest with you. Like, you take my 20 years right now. Forget about the 40 at home. Take the 20. And I've yeah. been to, you know, I've been to five Super Bowls. I only talk about four. You know, we don't talk about 35. But but I would give up practically anything to be in that building for Super Bowl 42, which is, you know, the greatest the greatest game to me ever just because of the magnitude. The, you're talking about the greatest Super Bowl uh, versus the – 18 and 0 Patriots. You're talking about being extreme underdogs. It is the it is not only the greatest Super Bowl ever, I agree, which is the greatest game ever. It's just the context of everything entering that game. Yeah, hey, look, look, arguably, you know, I'll go to war with anybody, you know, talking about Giants football and being the best games. You know, even if it wasn't the best game, it had the best play in the history of the game of football. And I, and it, that's not argue. You can't argue it. I don't care who you are. I don't care what catch you think is better. I don't care what throw you think is better. I'm talking about the escape and the throw to the catch. There's no better play on the biggest stage ever. So, mm-hmm. so getting getting back to that, yeah, you know, I've 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 sat through some really terrible years, and the last couple, holy cow, man, it's you know, it's struggling. You know, you would you say the last world. couple? I don't mean to interrupt you, but would you say the last couple, or would you say basically the last nine years? It's 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 been a it's been a long time. You're right. It's it's been a long time, but you know, it gets to you too, man. You could, you know, let's say the third game of the year, the fourth game of the year, and you're one and three, one and four, and you're going on the road in Cleveland or wherever, mm-hmm. and you're like, what am I doing, like? I just spent X amount of dollars on a ticket and you know where I sit. I only sit front row behind the Giants bench. So that ticket is buku it's, bucks. Exactly. You know? So I'm sitting there with a with a one in four, one in five team. I paid, you know, a lot of money for this ticket. I'm looking online, I see the same ticket for twenty dollars. And I, you know, and mm-hmm. I had paid I had paid God knows how much, you know, two, three months before that. I got to get a car. I got a food. I got to get a hotel. I got to get my transportation. I got to get that plane. I got to get the Uber to and from the airports. Like, like it's tough. It's tough. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, right, I'm glad you brought that up. It would be a really interesting topic to start off of. What was just because, you know, we're kind of in a rebuilding stage right now. What was probably your worst experience at a Giants game, whether it was the game itself was terrible or the team at the time was bad? Well, that's a really good question uh, because I don't, I don't normally, we don't normally go straight into the negative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we go into the positive, but, you know, unfortunately we've had a lot of negatives. So, you know, I don't mind talking about it. God, I've been, uh, you want to talk about on the road or just in general? You know, let me get on the road first because I'd be surprised I'll be honest with you. I'd be surprised if it's not like an NFC East rival road game. That no, might've been your worst, but no, I, I don't know. No, 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 no. You, you're right. I mean, I mean, we could go straight to Philadelphia with the, what with the 60, 61 yard or whatever it was that, you know, I, ha- we haven't, all right, let's go with the Philly game. There's a hundred different games. I could tell you that's been disgusting in the last X amount of years, but let's just take that game. For example, I'm in Philly, which I hate. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I can't stand that place. I get a lot of crap when I get to Philly. Go figure. Whether it I can't, be my, I can't stand Philly fans. I'll just put that out there. Yeah, There's well, some the of them. With, the thing with Philly fans is, and 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 I don't like them either. However, they is re- they they're as real as they come, man. 
They're as real as they come. And I like that about a fandom. I'm not saying they have any class. I'm not saying any of that. I don't like any of them, but they are real. So the thing with Philly fans is if you're an opposing team coming in and you and, and Philly loses, you're in trouble. If you're an opposing fan and you come in and Philly wins, you're still in trouble. <laughs> so that's that's the tough part about going to Philly. It really is. But but getting back to your question, let's say, you know, let's say I'm in Philadelphia. Uh, we're, get, we're 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 finally winning, and we was have that, that was 2017, right? Yeah, and we ha- we haven't won a game, and I can't tell you how long in there. I can't tell. How about just verse them? So I'm thinking. Um, you know what? I don't. What the what the Eagles do to the Giants? It's what the Giants do to the Redskins. Yeah, yeah, you're 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 right. So 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 I'm there and. You know, I don't I don't really talk a lot of smack because I sit front row. So if I don't want to turn around and answer you good or bad, I don't have to say nothing to you. And I love it. You know, there are people mm-hmm. ripping me all game. I don't have to say no. I don't ever have to turn around. That's the greatest part about sitting front row. But but I'm looking like I've been here before. I've seen how a field goal. I've seen how Giants go up, you know, with a minute, two minutes left in the game. Plenty of time left for the opposing team. Sure enough, here come the Eagles setting up for the field goal. And I'm like, there's no way this is going to happen. There's no way this is going to happen. And boom, they kick a 61 yarder and we lose the game. So, and, and to, to make it even more crazy, Jake Elliott at that point, I think what, that was his first year starting as a kicker or something? Like, <laughs> yeah, the dude's never. Yeah, yeah. And to, for them to even march him out there to kick that, I was like, no way. Get out of here with this nonsense. Before they even made the kick, when they were marching him out, in my mind, I'm like, oh, Philly's really being disrespectful today. They think they're going to make this. And, and they made it. Yeah, and they made it. And it's just, that just goes to show you what was going on with the Giants, you know, because nothing they could do, nothing they could do was right, you know? And, and, and you know, I mean, look, we could go back and talk about McAdoo and we could talk about Shermer and we, you know, which I'm sure we will in this time. But uh, but but I'll I'll chalk that game up as to to one of the ones that stabbed me in the back. Mm-hmm. I will say one thing, uh, Joe. Can you step up a little bit closer to your mic or something? In the last two minutes or so, your voice got a little distant. I'm not sure why. Yeah, no doubt. I actually sat, sat back in the chair because I was getting pissed about the game. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, to your point, right at that point, and you could argue even up until last year, maybe nothing was going right for the Giants. Like for a team to have that much confidence to believe they're going to have a success of making that field goal against your team shows you the kind of place that we were in just three years ago, just three years ago. And that was coming off of the 2016 playoff season. Which yeah, I a, a, I think was, was a gift uh, season. That was a gift. It was definitely an overachieving season, without a doubt. Yeah, but we were still just the previous year in the playoffs, and Philly had the confidence to do that. It is crazy. I think I think Philly, I think Philly. If Philly was zero and zero and fifteen facing the Giants, they have that confidence because it's just it's an East game, it's an East rivalry game, and and they have our number, so it, it sucks all the way around. They do that, which is why I'd say Philly wouldn't be on fifteen. They'd probably be one in fourteen because they've had a win against the Giants. <laughs> yeah, good point, man. Good point. Like I cannot, like on a serious note, I cannot remember the last time Giants went into Lincoln Financial Field and came out with a win. Maybe I'm overlooking some small win over the past couple of years, but for the life of me, I can't pull it out of my brain right now. Yeah, I, I, it, uh, truth, truth be told, I don't really care because we're talking about if we and I can't sit here and I can remember. But we're sitting here talking about one, two victories in, in X amount of years. I don't even want to talk about those two. I agree with you. You know what? That's a good point, too. Which brings me to the next question. Because you said you, you could remember it, right? And this this actually, looking back on it, this should have been the first question. But, hey, man, it's a fun Roll With The Punches podcast. I wanted to ask, how did License Play Guy come to be? Where, where did that even come from? So, uh, uh Funny, funny story, I guess. Um, so I'm, you know, I've been going to games for years. I'm turning 16 years old. And uh, my mom and dad, uh, I think of my, I think it was my, 
my mom, I was like, yo, I, I need to go to motor vehicles when I get my license. I'm about to get, about to get some customized plates. I need to get these giant <laughs> plates. And uh, I was thinking about it when I was 10. Like, I can't wait to drive. I can't wait to drive. We get custom plates. And, and let me tell you something. You're just in college right now. But, like, that was a lot harder back then, man. You had to go to motor vehicles. You had to have a, cu- a couple of, of, of ideas. You know, they had to look it up online. And, and they might not even get back to you the same day. It wasn't like mm. it wasn't like you could just go online, blah, 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 and get these plates. Nah, it was hard. Yeah, like now I think it's like an easy application. Nah, it's, it was hard. So I think when I turned 16, my mom took me to motor vehicles. And I waited online forever. Some things don't change. And and I got up to the counter. I had my paperwork all filled out. And and I, and I and the lady got back to me. And she was like, nah, that's that's. Giants is taken. And I remember man, I was yo, I was devastated, yo. I'm telling you, I was I was so upset. I really was. So did you get around it or like what happened? No, like I was crying like upset, like babyish. Oh Jesus. And, uh, and I remember like it was my mom's idea. She was like, Don't worry about giants. Why don't you just get rid of the eye and put a one in there? And I was like, Oh shoot, mom, Dukes. And I was <laughs> And uh, and sure enough, uh, G1 Ants was available, and I still have it on my car to this day. So, you know, I applied for it. I got it. And, you know, I, I put it on my car, and I forgot, I forgot how long, but, but the season was rolling around. You know, my birthday's in June, so September mm-hmm. comes, and my dad's like, you know, you should you should take that plate off and wear it around your neck to a game. And I'm like, don't be that's corny. I'm not I'm not wearing my license plate to a game. And my dad is like, what are you, you know, you scared? I'm like, no, I'm not scared. I just think it's corny. And uh, and he dared me. And, you know, you don't dare a 16 year old kid to do nothing. So uh, exactly. So I took it off my car. I took a, a shoelace and I put it around my neck. And, you know, people are like, oh, that's funny. I, you know, whatever. And and the Giants won. And if you know anything about Giants football back in the day, it still is to this day, like superstition is real. So mm-hmm. a lot of people in the section were like, yo, you better wear that again next week. So it just became a funny thing. I started wearing my license plate around my neck. And uh, and that was it. I was never a license plate guy until much, much, much later. But but I certainly was the guy to wear the license plate guy license plates around the neck. So that's that's, yeah. that's how it, you know, that's how license plate guy at least was was born. But it wasn't until Super Bowl 42 when I was on the DVD that and 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 the birth of social media did license plate guy take on a whole new meaning. Mm. Well, I guess we gotta thank your parents, not only for making this ugly mug over here, yeah. but also correcting him on getting the license plate and then daring him he's right don't don't dare a teenager especially a passionate fan to do anything and on that superstition thing i don't but uh, i have one crazy superstition right it's like whenever the giants score i gotta do some squats and it's like the most <laughs> random thing ever but one time when i was watching a game i think it was like it was it was the Saints game in 2015 that shootout between Eli and Breeze, right? Oh. I just start randomly, I just start doing random stuff because I wanted us to win so bad. And one time we scored, I was like, you know what? Let me just do like seven squats or something, seven for the touchdown, right? And then they score again, I do it again. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna continue doing this. And to this day, I still do it, dude. It's it's crazy. Like it doesn't work all the time, but I I hear you on the superstition there's, there's part. There's no doubt that. There are fans out there that got a lot of crazier stuff that you just said when when their team scores or they got a superstition. But I, I got to tell you a real funny story. I don't think I've ever told this story on a podcast. So so here's a here's the first story ever. That game mm-hmm. that game you just mentioned was another heartbreaker. Okay, because that was about about a biggest shootout as you could possibly get. Manning, Breeze, Breeze, Manning, 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 Breeze, Breeze, Breeze. It was. It was an incredible game. And I remember I I had to catch a flight. That's another thing. Like, I don't miss a lot of work. So when the game ends, I get to the airport and I'm back with like a red eye. I just got to get to work the next day. I don't take a lot of time off. Like, I'm dedicated to my job and the kids. So 
Mm-hmm. So I said, turn around to my buddy and I'm like, yo, if this game goes into OT, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got to go. And I don't ever miss a play. And he's mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, of course it does. And the game ends. When I tell you, man, I, I ran out that stadium. And we get into my buddy's car and he has a, he drives, he drives to a lot of games and yes, he drove to New Orleans. So, so we get mm-hmm. in his avalanche and I turn on ways and it's, it's taken me through back roads and everything. And I, I swear, I don't really, I shouldn't be saying this, but I was doing like a hundred and oh my God. Driving me back to yeah, it's okay. The, Nobody on here is going to, we don't pretend we didn't he hear that. Driving me back to the, to the airport. Actually, I'm driving. I'm driving his truck, and we're going through side streets, and I'm blistering. And all of a sudden, I see this car coming. I'm coming. This car's coming from the left. I was like, this is, oh, no, oh, no. I slam on the brakes. Boom. I mean, I hit this car in the back uh, driver's door, and I just see him doing, like, Three three sixties, and I'm like, oh no! Oh, it that's was bad. Terrible. It was bad. So, so I run out just to make sure this guy's okay. And he opens up the pass the uh, driver's side door, and I could see he's like, I'm not saying he's pretending like he's hurt because I didn't hit his door, but mm-hmm. he's like sitting there talking with his wife, who's in the passenger seat, like in Spanish. And I'm like, oh mm-hmm. shoot, like. I hope they're not, you know. So I said to them, I'm like, oh, Espanol? Oh, hablo Espanol muy poquito. You know, like, first of all, <laughs> and like, first, like, I'm telling you, I don't know any Spanish, yo. I know nothing, bro. But I was like, oh, you want to talk Spanish? Okay, I, I know what you're saying. And I was like, just to let you know, you went through a stop sign. So if you want to wait for the cops, I got no problem, man, because you're at fault here. I'm mm-hmm. not at fault. Yo. His eyes lit up and he was like, you know what? I don't even have insurance, man. Just get on your way. And I was so happy. You're right. No I was way. I so happy, man. I, I felt bad. I did. I felt bad because I hit him, but he definitely went through a stop sign. And, uh, and to make a long story short, he went on his way. I went on my way. Nobody was hurt. And I made it to the airport. You're li- I, I'm sorry, bro. All this, <laughs> he really said, I, yo, listen, I know a little Spanish. No, I, I, he said, yeah. I caught you going through the yeah. stop sign. Listen, yo, bro. I didn't, even say that. Listen. I didn't even say that part in Spanish. What he was like, he was saying something to her. She was saying something to him like, yo, this is this guy's fault. You can't take chances, man. You can't yep. take chances. And I was like, yo, oh, hablo espanol, muy poquito, muy poquito espanol. Uh, whatever I said, I was like, I speak a little Spanish. So what you want to do? And then he was like, yeah, I don't have a turn. Just, just go on your way. And I was like, oh, man, thank you. But anyway, so that, that, that was it even was it like a bad dent in the car? On his car. Nothing with my my friend's avalanche has one of those one of those uh, roll bars in the front. Man, he yeah. had a little dent. My friend's like, don't even worry about it. And I was already having a bad oh, yeah, day, man. A Giants loss. Breeze outplayed Manning. It was the worst. Listen, man. That that's another thing too. Why he? That's crazy that you. That's luck. Yes. I ain't even gonna call yes. it anything else. I agree with that you. That is luck without a doubt. You could have been. You could have missed your flight. There could have been a big holdup for no 100%. reason. You know, police, all that. 100%. Like that's just that luck. thing. That thing with the accident would have should have taken over an hour just to figure out what what happened. Exactly. Yo, listen, man. At least you notice if you're down in New Orleans, guys. Just know a little bit of Spanish. Yes, You'll be fine. Yes. And actually, anywhere you go, man. Anywhere you go. I That's gotta true. Start, I got to start Any, learning. Uh, and that game was Odell's homecoming, too. It was, yeah, because he's an LSU yeah. boy. Yeah, man. Man, Odell, listen, we could probably get into him later because, I don't know, we'll, we'll probably get into him later and just wide receiver divas in general. But that's uh, that might be another topic. So, on that game, though, right? Let's uh, let's pretend the accident didn't happen. Let's say you had some extra time. What would have been your reaction if you would have stayed and you know just soaked it all in? That oh my god, we just got like a what was it, like forty eight to fifty two yeah, or something. Guy, guy. You know, Breeze really outplayed them. Like it wasn't. I wouldn't even call it outplay because they both they were both great in that yes. game. But like 
Saints just came out yes, on top. No, no defense wanted to win that game. I, I mean, I don't know. The, the, I'm not really – maybe when I was back in college or a little bit after college, like you guys hang around after the game and maybe have a few or maybe go you know, around the, the Giants team bus and be like, yo, good looks to maybe a player comes out, daps up a little bit. But, I, man, I got to get to work, man. I don't care. I don't, I'm not hanging around nowhere. When that game ends, you know, nowadays I take some pics with some fans, which is pretty cool. I'm honored that anybody even asked me. I'm honored that people ask me to sign some stuff here and there. But other than that, I'm gone. I'm ghost. I want to I mm-hmm. get to the airport. I want to get on a plane. I want to get home. I understand you there, man. Definitely. As you get older, you know, your priorities get a little bit straighter, yep. a little more yep. sorted out. And like you said, you are traveling back and forth every game, so that takes a lot of time. As it does, well. man. It does so, like another job, bro. Exactly, and this is this is kind of a random question, right? But so, like, do you take do you go to your hotel first and then go to the airport? Or do you like have your stuff in the car in the parking lot with you? Oh, ready? that's a great question again. So, so, so when I go to a game, I always go on Friday night or Saturday, even though I'm there mad early. I don't want anything to prevent mm-hmm. me from flying out. So. I normally get to games on a Saturday and remind me, I'll tell you a great story about the Minnesota when the dome collapsed. I was in Minnesota. The Giants weren't in Minnesota. I was in Minnesota. But uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, so I normally get there. I get a hotel for Friday night. And that's where I normally go on Saturday. I get a hotel for Saturday night. But once Sunday comes, I pack up either my friend's car, my rent a car, and then I take it to the game. And either park, you know, in a lot or somewhere a little bit, you know, off site. And then I run to the car after the game, return it at the airport. And then I'm already, I'm there. I'm ready to rock and roll. All right. That's, that's a pretty good strategy. Yeah. Like you could just leave immediately and why not, you know, why not go ahead and tell the Minnesota game story right now? Yeah. Why not? You yeah. brought it up. Again, I don't tell this story a lot, but so I'm trying to get to the game and all New York airports are, no, no, New York airports are flying, but I can't get to Minnesota. And this is, I believe, mm-hmm. I think it's Friday night, Friday. I'm trying to get to Minnesota. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. And I remember the last flight out of LaGuardia to Duluth, Minnesota. I know it so well, Duluth. And I'm looking on a map and I'm like, Whoa. I'm like, how the where is the exactly. loot even in relation so to like looking on a map and i'm like the loot the loot and i'm like oh shoot that's close that's maybe a, a, a an hour and a half two hour car ride something like that i'm like i could do that i could do that all right mm-hmm. so let's go to the loot so i land in the loot i swear to you it's like i don't know eight nine o'clock at night and i rent a car and i'm driving from Duluth to Minnesota, and. I'm driving, I'm driving, and sure enough, here comes the storm that they predicted. And when I tell you that it was white out, dude, you think New York snow is bad? It was it was unreal. So a two the Arctic Circle came it, down. You upon have no you. idea. It was so bad, like there weren't even any like you know, on the side of a highway, you could see mile markers and this nothing, nothing. So when you when I tell you, you but the the question to me, the question for me to you, right, is were you even on a highway, right? Because Duluth sounds like no, a small was a, town. Was it, it like yeah. a one? It was road? it was a major highway, but 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 I'm talking okay. about trucks and cars on the side. No one's really moving. But I gotta get, I gotta, mm-hmm. I gotta get to Minnesota. I gotta get there. Anyway, I make it to Minnesota. I, I would say a two hour car ride turned into a six hour car ride. And I make it, Jesus I make Christ. it to, to Minnesota. I check into the Giants team hotel and I, I remember, I forgot what time I woke up, but I turned on sports center and sure enough, the dome had collapsed. So, so I already knew that I was in trouble. It's not like the game was going to, was going to be played. The Giants are stuck in Kansas city. They didn't make it to Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I'm in the Giants team hotel in Minnesota. They're not there. And then the NFL is trying to figure out what's going to happen. And that's the game that took place in Detroit. So I got from 
I had to pay a crazy amount of money to return the car to Minnesota. Cause you know, if you don't return it to the place you got it, you're in trouble. I returned it to Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I think I slept in the airport with a million other people that were stranded trying to get out. I couldn't get out on Sunday. Thank God, because they moved it to Detroit on Monday. I flew to Detroit and mm-hmm. I made it for the game. And that was crazy. So did you did you end up taking a day off then? Or were you like, was Monday That's working a, out you? know what? You? I, don't, I, I would be lying to you if I told you what the hell I did on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. <laughs> All I know is I was in Detroit. There's a picture of me and Brandon Jacobs on the field before the game, because that's my dude. We're on the field before the game. Yeah. There's no one there yet. It was surreal. It was crazy. It was crazy to play that game in Minnesota, uh, in Detroit. Well, what was the what was the audience like? The crowd? Was there a lot of people there? Or did uh, you, was it that sparse? Was, that's crazy too, because no, 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 no. They they sold tickets. They honored tickets if you had it, but they also sold tickets to anybody in Detroit. The, the weird part about mm-hmm. that was I can't I can't fully remember how it went, but I know it was like first come, first serve. So like I have front row t- seats, but if my butt wasn't down there in time, you didn't sit there. I can't be- I can't mm-hmm. remember. Did they honor it? Man, I forgot how they honored it, but it was it was tough, man. It was the NFL did a great job to even get that game going. You think they did a great job? I was going to ask, like, how you feel about, you know, on the one hand, I can see why they do the first come first serve. On the other hand, I can see if a fan, you know, gets upset, like, you know, I did pay for my seat down there. You think the NFL did uh, handle it always, well? Honestly, bro, they handle this stuff like professionals. Look what they're doing with the draft. They're still going to have it. They're going to do. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's going to come off a little wild, but and a little weird, but they're going to pull it off and everything's going to be just fine. And great point bringing up the draft because that's where we're going next. Now, when we were talking about that Breeze uh, Manning game, nobody wants to win. Uh, no defense wants to win the game, I should say. Completely correct. The Giants right now, I don't even know if you could call it a defense with what we have. Granted, we haven't seen the free agents that we got play on the field yet. I think they did an all right job. But where do you think they would go? And then where do you think they should go? Two different questions in the draft. All right, well, let's start off with uh, your first point with free agency. You know, listen, I, I wanted I wanted everybody fired. I wanted to I wanted uh, get them. I wanted everybody gone. I wanted to scrub the floors mm-hmm. in the locker room. I wanted new ball boys. I wanted everything scrubbed. But, you know, you got to give you got to give get them in some some credit, man. You know, he did a good job in free agency. He really did because, you know, the first thing you got to do is take care of your own. And if you lose your own, you got to replace those guys. So even though you want to run out and get a clowny or you want to get a Yannick, or you, you, you know, you want to get all these guys, you got to replace what you lost. So, so you lose an Ogletree, you replace with a Martinez. And then you got to say to yourself, Kush, is he better? Is he the same? Is he worse? Those are the those are the things you got to really work out in your own head. I'm going to say that Gettleman had a solid B. I really do. I think he did a good job at free agency. Yes, I wanted Clowney. Yes, I wanted to trade for Yannick. Yes, I wanted uh, um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, whatever. I wanted all of these guys. Middleton? You know, like every, yeah, everybody okay, okay. else wants. But but you really have to look at your your cap space, and you got to figure out whether you're doing the right thing or not. So. I'm giving him a B for free agency. Yeah, I did. I gave him a B. Everybody, you know, the, the haters on Gettleman are going to give him a, a D. You know, I, the people that hate Blaff, Which I think is just way out of the question. So, I mean, look, there are haters out there. You know, people that hate Blake Martinez are going to, you know, they're going to give him a D. People that think he's okay are going to give him a C. And then there are people out there that are going to be like, okay, he got rid of this guy and got the same guy. So I'm still giving him a D. But I think and he of, did a decent job. So, and of course, there are people out there. While there's Gettleman haters, there's definitely people out there. I guess Gettleman stands that will give him an A no matter what. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, real talk. I don't know many of the A's, but mm-hmm. but, they, yeah, but 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 there are some out there. Look, I, I nailed a couple of free agents. I believe you know. Even though I wanted Van Noy, I knew that I I, I 
was tweeting very heavily that I knew that the Giants were hot and heavy for Blake Martinez. They did wind up getting him and not Benoit. So I knew that was going to happen. And a couple of others, I knew what was going to happen with, uh, uh, but I think everybody else did with Leonard Williams. I thought Rosas, uh, I think he's going to have a bounce back year. I think we paid him a lot of money, but I think he's a really good kicker. I really do. Um, on the so, Rosas thing, if you don't mind me speaking on that real quick, uh, the reason I think he's going to have a bounce back year is because Zach Diassi has a long snapper last year, was terrible. You know, I don't want to sugarcoat it. He had really bad snaps throughout the entire year. And when we replaced him with Tabor Pepper in the last three games, Rosas didn't miss a kick. And then we just yeah, signed a new long snapper. You know what? You know what? You're, you're a knowledgeable fan because, because first of all, there's no one better than than Diasi out there, but he definitely was injured. Um, mm -hmm. And it showed. Um, so, so you know what? Look at the, uh, who the Giants pick up uh, to snap this year. I forgot. Um, Casey, uh, Casey Crater from the Broncos, a Pro Bowl long snapper. Yeah, and let me tell you something. I gave that such a high praise because you don't know how important that is until you have a bad snap. So, mm -hmm. so you're right. So, I think Rosas is going to have a, a bounce back year. So, so I think Gettleman did a decent job with that. So let's fast forward to this draft. Um, I got to tell you, man, sitting at four, there's, there's only X amount of options. And here they are. You run up to the podium if Chase Young is there. I'm talking about you run up. You, he is... I remember X amount of months back, he was the only guy in the draft. You mm -hmm. know, there was nobody else in the draft but Chase Young. So if he's there, you run up there, you don't look back, and that's it. You got so the now, bell on speed dial. Yep. So now Chase Young is gone to the Redskins, and now I hate him forever. And now you're sitting at four, and there are low. there are three options, four options, really. I'm not, I don't want to talk about the Okuda, uh, Derek, uh, the Brown, the tackle. I don't want to talk about those options because I consider those surprise options. Are they there? Yes. But I'm going to include all of those in a surprise. So you, your real options are trading, Simmons, and an offensive tackle. So let's talk about all that. Mm -hmm. If you want Simmons, and he's there, you pick him up, he could play all three linebacker positions, he can guard the tight end, he's a beast, he's going to be, his game will, will be very uh, well adapted in the NFL, and I would clap and be very happy. However, he's not my first choice. Okay. Uh, I right. agree with you there, he's not my first choice either. Well, our first choice is Chase Young, but he's not my second choice either. My second choice is trading. The Giants are in need of multiple positions. And if they could get multiple positions back and still stay in the top 10, I believe a trade is in store. However, I love all these Twitter and, and IG and Facebook and social media armchair quarterbacks, these, these these guys that think they, they know better than the GM, the, <laughs> you, need a, you need another team to do that. You can't exactly. just be like, okay, we're trading. Oh, yeah? I'm so, who? I'm so happy you brought this up because literally yesterday, I believe, I put out a tweet. I'm like, guys, it takes two people to dance. The Giants can't just go to a random team, say, hey, yo, you want to you wanna give me yeah. like your first, your second? I'll give you this uh, fourth overall, and yes. bam, it happens. No. And I said the same thing for the people that were complaining about, oh, my God, they didn't even try to get Corey Littleton. It's like, how you know that guy wants to come here? It takes it takes two, bro. It takes two in free agency. It takes two with an agent. It takes two with a team to trade. It takes two. That's all there is to it. So so I do want the, I do want the trade. I want the trade over Simmons. That's not saying mm -hmm. I wouldn't be happy with Simmons. I just want the trade over Simmons. So So let's say trade is off the table. And now it's between Simmons and an offensive tackle. Uh, I got to tell you, man, I'm so torn. I am sick and tired of talking about the offensive line. <laughs> just, just go and get one of these guys already and not look back. Okay, you're going to get a player 
that's going to be your offensive tackle for the next 10 years. Let's hope. So let's say, let's say it's an offensive tackle. I personally want Wills. I do. I want Wills. I'll take Wirfs and I'll take Thomas and then I'll take Becton. I think I, Becton, I, I will say, I'm sorry. I'm not taking Becton. I do not believe in Becton. No, no, no. Hey, look, I'm on the same page as you. I Becton mm-hmm. is my last guy only because I think he's a year away. I think he is too big if there is such a thing. Um, and I'm scared of injury when you're that big. Uh, I think Wills has tremendous footwork and he's strong. I think Wirfs is uh, good. I think Thomas is good. And that's where I stand on that. So if the Giants went ahead and took an offensive tackle at four, it's not the sexy pick. I wouldn't be jumping up and down. I'd be like, okay, good. We got an offensive tackle. Let me turn this crap off now. So, so, you know, I'll be happy with Simmons. I'll be happy with an offensive tackle. And then I'll be surprised with the surprise guys that I told you about. All right. I will say this. I like your rankings of them. I agree with you. At fourth, um, I, I, I personally, I would be, you know, I wouldn't be ecstatic because like you said, it's not exactly a, a sexy pick, but everybody knows it's probably... It's, it's the most sense, in my opinion, is the most sensible pick just because, like you said, we've been talking about the offensive line for God knows how long. And um, part of me is a little annoyed that fans forget we've been talking about the offensive line for how long. Yeah. But I can see where they're coming from when they're like, yo, Simmons is a Cam is guy. I can see part of that. But the larger part of me is like, yo, you can't just forget about the fact that this offensive line is it's bad. It's like, it's, it's kind of, it's weird. It's a contradiction because we got two really good guards and we have a tackle that could be good. If he played up to it, God knows Solder had a surgery last year. He was still coming off his injury. And there, there's the personal thing with his, you know, his kid having cancer. So who knows how that affected him last year? Yeah. True. So and we have know, a tackle. Don't, don't sleep on Nick Gates and don't sleep mm-hmm. on, and don't sleep on Spencer Pulley at center. I don't want, you know, I, 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 they're both good, but obviously I'd want, you know, a, a first rounder at the tackle. And I'd certainly want that, uh, the Ruiz guy at center, but, but here we are again, talking about the same crap we've been talking about for years. Mm-hmm. So you're right. So yeah, I, I agree with you there, especially on the center part recently, as you know, as the times go and now, now that everybody's home and everybody's stir crazy. So Things change even faster than usually. Uh, re- recently, the hot fad has been, you know, take a center along with a tackle or take a center along with Simmons, which I can see taking a center along with Simmons. But if we take a tackle, I don't see it necessary to go center, you know, earlier in the draft, maybe litter down the line for a depth piece. But I agree with you. Pulley and Gates, let's see what they got. Because yeah. Pulley is better than Jalapio, in my opinion. I don't know why we started Jalapio over Pulley last year. I think he has more uh Spencer has more experience and he played better for us in 2018 when John was injured. And then yep. for Gates, they're saying a lot of great things about him. And the last time the Giants said similar things about a player where they're like, we believe in him. You guys will see what we see in training camp. It was about Aldrich Rosas. And yep. well, we got the great year from Aldrich Rosas in 2018. Yeah. So I agree with you there. While the offensive line is bad, it's at the same time, it's not that far off. I think if we get a tackle, Next year will be a good offensive line because it will be more of a sum of the parts thing rather than we have all stars everywhere. It would be more sum of the parts. And yeah, then we could. If, if your prediction is right and the Giants stay away from a center uh, until the later rounds, then you'll have Nick Gates and Pulley competing for the center position if the Giants mm-hmm. go OT. Yeah, that's, that's what I think is going to happen if we go OT. That could. And to be honest with you, I really do think if we take a tackle, right, because of, you know, I think Solder is going to have a better year this year. Because like I said, you know what I'm saying? Mentally, he wasn't there. Mentally, he wasn't there and coming off the surgery. I expect him to have a better year. And if he doesn't, obviously, he's going to be off the team. But let's say he does. That affects how he plays next to Hernandez, who will also have a better year. And who, because of Solder's play last year, decreased. Which would then, you know, it's, it's like it's, it's just a machine, you know, it's a cog. They have to work together to be better. And so I think Solder works better. The offensive line on the left side works better. And then we'll have a new right tackle, which will help out our right guard and Kevin Zeitler, 
who people forget is one of the better right guards in the league. Totally agree. And I think the offensive line will be good. I don't want to, you know, be one of the fans that say, oh, we're going to be great A+, plus, but I think it's going to be good. I, I, I'm, I'm on board. Right? So that's my take on the O-line. For defense, I agree with you. I love Simmons. I do think he's one of the better players in the class. Um, he's probably, like, defensively, probably my third best player because I think people undervalue how good Okuda and Brown are. That's just me. They're so good. They're, they are extremely good, and... Yeah. Simmons has that versatility for him, but who knows how we're going to use him. I would hope we use him a similar way that Clemson did, but if we don't, it's, you know, he's not going to be the same player that he was in college. It all depends how this defense uses him. The thing is with Simmons, though, is that our defense has a lot more holes than the offensive line does. Oh, yes. As, ba- as bad as our offensive line is, our defense is worse. You want to take it from there? <laughs> well, you, you said a mouthful. Giants are going to need... Several players on the defensive side. Several. Um, if the Giants wound up to take Okuda, they literally would have a lockdown. You know that, right? Yeah. I mean, they would have a lockdown corner. However, man, passing up all the players to go with a cornerback, I just, that's the surprise that I was talking about before. The Giants have to add a safety. Who's playing safety, by the way? Uh, as of right now, the only safety we got for sure is Jabil Peppers at strong safety. We have no idea what's happening with free safety. Well, don't forget Julian Love might be moving in the slot. No, I'm back, man. I'm back. I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, I think that might have been me. Technical difficulty, guys. There was a storm. I think I know what it is. Yesterday, a huge storm in the state of New York knocked out my internet. So I'm probably facing some aftershocks or something. The old aftershocks, bro. Yeah. So let's kind of. I think you were talking about Okuda, right? When you cut off, like yeah, so you would have a lockdown. I think. I mean, look. I mean, you you would have to be look. Anybody you're getting in at four is going to be top notch. You know that. So Okuda would be incredible. Brown would be incredible. Although I'll tell you, the fan base would go absolutely crazy if Gettleman took a defensive tackle at four. I'm talking about crazy. They but, would. Um, there's fans I know. Who would just like lock themselves up for like a whole week because of oh, that? Oh hell yeah, yeah they would. Straight jacket and everything, because you know part of it is because you know there's you know the jokes going around that Gelman loves his big strong defensive tackles and whatnot. But I agree with you, Brown is a hell of a player. He is on top of the class, and I can see where people will come from. We don't need, we really don't need him. But if we take him, I think we're probably going to let go of Leonard Williams. But that's a whole other situation. No, you know, I, like, I, think, uh, I think Leonard Williams is going to sign for X amount of years and and drop his his money down to like 12, 13 mil. I do. You think that's going to happen regardless of what happens in the draft? I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so, too, because I have no idea what's going on there. Me neither. So, yeah, back with Okuda, you were saying. Yeah. So, I mean, look, uh, I, that's, that's one of the surprise picks and, you know, I don't want to sound like I know more than the next person cause I don't, but you know, taking Okuda and surprise should be in the same sentence cause he's that good. But I just mm-hmm. believe for the giants, it would be a surprise pick. It would be, you know, we just signed Bradbury and like, oh, wow. if we break down the way that free agency went with signing a corner, signing a linebacker, uh, at least, you know, a primarily tackling linebacker. Uh, we got a swing tackle and whatnot. It it wouldn't make sense for us to go. Uh, I shouldn't say it wouldn't make sense because then it then it also looks like I know more like the next person, which I don't. Right, right, right. But it doesn't lead to you know it doesn't. There's not a straight path to then taking a cornerback after signing the second best cornerback on the market. Correct. I agree with that. I agree a hundred percent. Right. So. Is there any pick that you would be, you know, upset with? Yeah, Brown. Brown? You would be upset with him. I just can't, for the life of me, see sitting at four and not, you know, not trading out, you know, and you go and take a defensive tackle. I know you're in love with them, but that's not where we should be at four right now. That's just my own, that's my own personal opinion. I agree with you. We don't need it because it is the strongest part of our defense right now. Totally agree. Like, 
And there's, you know, there's been rumors going around that we're trading either Williams or Tomlinson. I would love to keep Tomlinson because he's the homegrown product. I don't and know right about now, all these rumors, man. I really don't. You um, don't? No, nah, I don't. I don't. I don't know if we're trading around. I, you know what? I guess. I guess it's just going to depend on uh, on what's going on with, um, you know, with with Williams or if, is there is there a trade for Yannick? Uh, what's going on with Clowney? Is he going to sign back in? Uh, is he going to sign back in Seattle? Which I believe he's going to. I yeah. At this point, I don't see him going anywhere else. And uh, Seattle, I'm sure, would love to have him back. On what would be a cheaper contract than they expected to. Yep. I agree. So are you somebody that wanted Yannick or Clowney? Like how badly did you want a Yannick, for example? I wanted them both. Hell yeah, I wanted him. Uh, you know, I, I think Clowney is great. And I think he makes everybody else great. Everybody's over there talking about his injury and this and that. And he's injury prone. That guy can ball. That guy could clat out ball. Okay. Um Yes, I would be pissed if uh, the Giants signed him for twenty million a year and he's hurt. Of course, that's the that's the that's what the price you pay for going after a free agent. Um, uh, Yannick, I would have loved him uh, on the Giants. Um, I'm not paying him twenty million a year and giving up some picks or something, so that's not going to happen. But that was going to be my next question because that's what he's looking for. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not paying you that much money. I mean, uh, uh, not with the holes that we have to fill. That's all. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. If we were going to have a Yannick or a Clowney, it would not have been for $20 million, especially not at Clowney. I think he's probably going to go back to Seattle for maybe 18 somewhere around there, maybe 17 I don't know how low his contract is going to go, but on a Yannick, who is still you know, up to like yesterday, when there was a report you know, coming out. You know, obviously the Giants are open to trading the pick. Gelman said that. But then Glazer came out, who's one of the only people I trust, you know, word to mouth because of the Odell situation. He was like, Giants are definitely looking heavily into trading down and Jaguars were a suitor. And I'm like, if that's the case, and if Yannick is involved, I I would be upset if we, we bring him over and then we pay him $20 because as good as he is, he's not worth that. I, I agree. I, look. Maybe when this is all said and done, maybe Gettleman did the right thing here all the way around. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Maybe he did the right thing all the way around. He didn't go and spend the $20 million on one player. Um, I know that he's, you know, taken a lot of crap for the Leonard Williams situation, and rightfully so. That was just a, just a bonehead move on his part. I think he knows it. Um, he was in a lose-lose situation with that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had to sign him and now we, you know, he was, he was damned if he did and damned if he didn't, you know, like you go ahead, you signed Williams for all that money. We hate you for it. You let Williams walk. We hate you for it. So he was, he was done no matter what Gettleman on that. Yeah. And Gettleman overall, I think, I think, I don't want to say in general, but his overall tenure with the Giants, it's been more good than bad, in my opinion. And the good comes heavily from his drafts. Yes, agreed. Uh, I, I, you know, you know what? I think Gettleman, I'm like, sometimes I'm like hot with him and, I'm, and then I'm ice cold, like I'm lukewarm. I don't, I don't know how to think. Like, did I, do I really listen to Josh Norman, who I hate, or I listen to some of the things that came out of his mouth? You know how how what mm-hmm. he said about about Gettleman, and then don't forget, you know, one of my best friends on the team was Landon Collins. Now I don't mm-hmm. hold, I don't hold that against Gettleman. I don't hold not not giving Collins all that money against Gettleman. I don't. I wish Collins was still here. However, the stuff I know, you know, like Collins, who was was at the stadium every day working out, and Gettleman is walking by him in the in the weight room and not saying nothing to him not saying Mm -hmm. we want you not saying we don't want you not saying we can't wait to get rid of you not saying we can't wait to have you back not even saying nothing that's that's one of the things that's one of the things i love that you brought up because collins people forget and it's it's kind of easy to forget you know given how fast the world moves now but people really forget collins was like a true giant while he was here and he was one of those guys now, that was first in, last out, 
you know, one of the most respectful guys on the field, off the field. Collins was a true giant. It was a big reason we loved him. And people do forget that. Yep. Yeah. And and I got to tell you, he is, uh, he's, I don't know. I, he, Collins gets a bad rap now, although I wish he would just keep his mouth shut because he talks about the Giants way too much. But he's still, He does talk a lot of crap he now. He does, but he's still hurt. He's still hurt, yeah. bro. That's like if you and I lost our job tomorrow, you know, I wouldn't say nice things about my old boss. And if I did say nice things, I might take a jab at him every now and then, too. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's doing. It doesn't, that's what it doesn't doing. help that as soon as Collins left, I will say this. As soon as Collins left, a lot of Giants fans came out of the woodwork talking about, ah, he wasn't all that. You know what I'm saying? He was just that. basically a small linebacker. Yeah, I hate that. A lot of that, that came out of the woodwork. I, I don't like that at all, man. I think that's a bunch of crap, to be honest with you. When people do that, you know, they, they start talking about a play. Oh, I want to see one player that didn't, you know, one guy, like you said, we were going to get into this, that didn't want Odell. You know, Odell is a playmaker. Odell is an incredible, incredible wide receiver. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, okay, yes. A couple of headaches here and there. But I think his headaches... His play, in my opinion, his play outweighed his headaches. Um, but when you're on a crappy team, the headaches are magnified. Yeah. And that's people don't realize what losing does to an uber competitive yeah, person that's a professional. It, kills it. It it really does. And you know what? Just to put, you know, just to, to finish off the landings, uh, the landing topic, and then we'll shift right into Odell. On Landon, right? He is still, in my opinion, a better safety than Jabril Peppers is. That's not to say Peppers is going to be, you know, worse than Collins for the rest of his career. We don't know what's going to happen. And no, I, would, I just, I just want to say, I would. Com- I just, you just, just had this conversation. I am in a thousand percent agreement with you. I, mm-hmm. I, I think that Collins is a better safety. Um, he was paired with nobody. Uh, <laughs> Another thing that people love to forget, he was the he was the best player in our defense at one point. 2016 should have been the defensive player of the year. That's how good he was. Yeah, yep. I don't disagree with you. Uh, so, so it's like I don't know. I, I, yeah, yeah. Go on, go I, on. No, no, no. We're saying the same things, man. I, I, I agree with you. I think I just think he's a better safety. Um, but exactly. I don't know. I guess we'll. Uh, We'll have to. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Have to wait see. We'll see how Peppers turns out. You yeah. know, especially with the new coaching staff. But I would have loved, and I still do to this day, wish that he was still on the Giants, not for eighty-four million dollars. No, nope. but agreed. But there's definitely, there's definitely something there from Gelman's side that we're not getting, and I'm sure has something to do with why it became a sour ending, and why he went for so much money. I'm sure. I'm positive Collins would have came back for, you know, a reasonable amount of money. At the same time, you know, kind of played devil's advocate. There was many reports saying he did not want to be franchise tag. Uh, so, so, so it's so let's let's talk about that real quick. Um, yeah, uh, Collins was going to play. I I, mm-hmm. I I spent I was with him every single day. You know, it's kind of like when you're with your ex or whatever, with your with your girl or whatever, and you say something and you immediately take it back. You know, like like Collins was going to play. You're not not playing on eleven point two million dollars. You're playing. OK, I don't, mm-hmm. I, I don't care who you are. You're playing. Um, mm-hmm. So it but it doesn't it doesn't hurt. It doesn't help him that he was coming out saying I wouldn't have played on. it. I wouldn't have played on it. I'll tell you a funny story. So, you know, my softball game was was coming up that year and last year, whatever it was, two years ago now. And Collins were going to do an interview. And I'm like, yo, whatever you do, just do me a favor. Stay away from the contract talk like we're here to talk about charity like. Just please do me a favor. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Sure enough, first question. He's like, nah, I'm not playing on no tag. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, my me. God. I'm like, you're killing me, bro. You're killing me. So, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, um, it, it was tough, uh, to figure that stuff out with, uh, how did you feel? Or like, what was your reaction when you realized, oh, we just let him walk home. Um, he's not coming back. Dude, that's my friend. You know, I, yeah. I hate it. But, but friend or no friend, I care about the Giants. You know, players are going to come and go. They'll be friends with me mm-hmm. forever, but players come and go. So when, you know, when he had to go because we weren't going to pay him. Look, I look at the, I look at the Giants like 
with Landon Collins and I look at it as bad timing. You know, we're not paying you $11.2 million because we need five, six other players on defense. So it's bad timing, mm-hmm. you know? And I-, I will continue to say this over and over again just because of what Collins meant to the team and to a fan like me. You know, obviously, I didn't have the relationship that you did with him. But as a fan that looked at the Giants for those three, four years that he was on there, Collins was, to me, the best player we had at one point. You know, he was homegrown. He was ours. He was just pure giant, and he was good at it. And I, I, I still can't help but think if you were on the team right now, our secondary would be in better shape. But that's a hypothetical. You know, I don't know for sure. Yeah, you can't say that. Uh, I agree with you. I hate when people are... Uh... I hate when people say, oh, yeah, well, if Odell was, he's not here, you know, well, if we didn't, we don't if know. we didn't bring back Eli, Mitt, well, we did, you know, I don't, I'm not down with hypotheticals either. I, I'm not. And, and now let's shift right into Odell, right? Your feelings on the situations, on the situation that happened, thoughts, like, let me get it. I, you know, look, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's my guy also, you know, and uh, I think. He got a raw deal. He got the raw end of the deal. And I'm not talking about the trade. I'm talking about in New York. And what I mean by mm-hmm. that is I know the, I know Odell of the type of guy that takes his shirt off to go back for you. I know Odell that, that literally when I tell you that the guy does things for charity, uh, gives things away, really nice guy. And yet, and yet. The media, and don't get me wrong, and he does some really stupid things, but the 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 amount that the dumb things are played up to be life threatening is so wrong. It really is. And uh, I will say this: once the and I don't know when it started. I don't know if you could pinpoint it, but once the label got onto him as diva, done. anything and everything was considered yeah, bad. Done. I mean, look, the only thing that I kick I kick my head, uh, you know, that I, I yell at him for. Not the not the pissing in the end zone in Philly, not the kicking of the net or, or you know, m- proposing to the kick in it. None of that stuff. That stuff's just corny and, and, and to each his own. But that interview, that hurt, bro. That interview was that, done. That was what killed that it. That killed it. He was done after that interview. Done. And but but again, I, I think he's an incredible wide receiver, one of the tops in the game. And I and you can't can't change my mind about that. Here's the thing, right? I agree with you. He is an incredible wide receiver top in the game. I do think, you know, his performance in Cleveland this year was not so much him as it was just the Cleveland Browns being the Cleveland Browns. I I will say this, right? You say you don't like to get into hypotheticals. I can respect that. But kind of like with Collins, Odell would be a great receiver on his team right now. I believe at least offensively, we would be a bit more productive with him around. But once again, we have no idea. He's not. So why get into why it, get right? Into it? Odell, when he was here, I agree with you. It's the thing that killed it was the interview, but his play always out, I guess, outshone the antics, if you want to call it that. I never had a problem with the kick in that situation. In fact, I found it funny because he did, in my opinion, he took it from something that was scrutinized and made it into a funny thing we can enjoy when he did the proposal thing. That's just me. I found it funny. I didn't find it annoying or anything. I, I thought it was, he was just, you know, being, you know, somebody the fans could laugh with rather than, you know, have to scorn at or something yeah. like that. The peeing in the end zone thing, I didn't even think it was that big of a deal. Maybe that's just me. You know, I, I'm, I was born in South America, you know, maybe it's a different <laughs> culture. I don't see how it was that disrespectful. I have no idea. You know, I never found a problem with it. It's just like a lot of things were overblown. And like I said, the minute he did something, they were they were looking for, they were digging and digging to look for oh, something yeah. to pin on him. Oh, yes. And that's where I, I, once again, I agree with you. He had the wrong end of the deal in New York, in the media. They just, it's like they didn't want him to be here. I don't disagree. And, uh, you know, I guess what you're feeling on the, uh, you know, how it turned out, both. Both teams are happy. I, I don't think the, the Browns are as happy as we are, uh, as the Giants are. But, uh, you know, now that it's played out and it's, uh, you know, years later, I um, still wish he was a Giant. But, uh, you know, I'll take what we got. And I wish we would have got one more player. That's all. You wish you wish we would have got one more player. I was one of the people saying, 
I thought he was deserving of another, you know, first round, maybe second round pick. But I definitely think we got the better end of the deal. You know, we got a all pro guard. We got rid of uh, Olivier Vernon. You know, we got the Landon Collins uh, replacement in Dribble Peppers, who, you know, I still say could be could be somebody down the line we can keep an eye out for. Like, we, we got a better overall deal because of what you said with Collins. We couldn't pay you that money because we needed so many players. We just needed so many other pieces. Yeah, I mean, we did, plain and simple. Uh, I, 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 I don't know about another first rounder or even a second, but the Giants should have gotten – Maybe another lineman or a third rounder thrown in with the o- o- Odell deal, but that's that's just me. All right, good. Let's uh, let's get out of the memory lane, which is kind of sad to be honest with you. That was a little little dark yeah, times so down got, there, so but let's got. focus on the present. <laughs> we got the negative out of the way exactly. finally. Let's focus on the present. Saquon Barkley. All right. And I'm starting with him. I'm going to get to the franchise later. Maybe you could argue that Saquon is the franchise, right? Saquon Barkley. Going around recently, and I hate the topic because I really think, you know, Saquon is one of those other dudes, pure giant. But it's been going around. Oh, my God. Saquon shouldn't have been the pick in 2018. I'm like, why are people talking about it? It happened. But your opinion on everything about Um, Saquon. I didn't want Saquon. I was was on the quarterback uh, train. and then I wanted a running mm-hmm. back. So the Giants did a running back and then a quarterback. They did the reverse of what I wanted. I wanted quarterback, running back. They went running back, quarterback. So I was just off a year with them. But uh, I wanted, I thought it was important that the Giants um, got the quarterback of the future. Uh, everybody was crying about Manning, mm-hmm. crying about Manning. And I want to tell everybody, shut the hell up because there's nobody better. You, there, it, I don't care about replacing Manning, a legend, no problem. Replace him. But you better replace him with someone that's better. Who did the Giants have that was better? Mm-hmm. Davis Webb, Kyle Loletta, Gino, Gino Smith. Stop it already. So I did agree with going to get a quarterback. They didn't. They went with the best running back in the game, Saquon Barkley. And I'm not upset about it. I couldn't care less about it. I love him. He's the greatest athlete in the draft. And he's by far the most incredible dynamic running back that the Giants have ever had. With that said, okay, with that said, here we are a couple years later, and are we going to treat Barkley like Odell? Are we going to treat Barkley like the end of Manning's career, like not giving him a supporting cast and having, you know, and being a superstar on the field? What's going to happen? What's going to happen to Barkley? Is he going to sit here? What's going to happen when his payday comes up? He's going to be the highest paid running back in the league. And even though McCaffrey just got there, what's that, 16 a year? Barkley's going to get 17, 18. So are the Giants going to, are the Giants going to yep. pay that or are they going to trade him? It's a valid question, right? Especially because McCaffrey got paid. It was yesterday or two days yesterday? ago. I can't remember, right? I will say this. I will say this. He got paid less than I thought he would because of just the way the market works. Usually the next player up doesn't get just $1 million more. They get like $2, $3 million yeah. more. McCaffrey only got one more than Zeke, you know, on a per year basis. So I was surprised yeah. by that. That that gave me hope because I will say the, the same thoughts that were running through your head were running through mine. I'm like, oh, my God, if we end up in a similar situation to what happened with Odell with Saquon, I will be, you know, part of me will be devastated just because I want him to stay on the team for the long run because he is the best running back we've had in the history of the Giants because he's currently the best offensive player. If you exclude, you know, a guy like Kevin Zeitler, who, in my opinion, is really underrated. He's our best offensive player on the team and all that. And the reason it ran through my head is because he's going to command a lot of money. One, two, running back, you know, their shelf life is just a fact. Not that long. Maybe, you know, the top, top out at like maybe seven, eight years, if you're lucky, especially with a guy with Saquon who is like so dynamic. I can't help but think that the stress on his body later down the line is going to be more than a regular running back. That's just me. So it's like, I'm like, are we going to end up in a similar situation or are we going to pay him and keep him? And that McCaffrey contract kind of gave me a little hope because McCaffrey got a lot less than I thought he was going to, which means Saquon might get less than I thought he was going to. I thought Saquon was going to be a $20 million back, which I wasn't even sure if I wanted to pay him back. I don't know if a running back is uh, worth $20 million. I don't know. I, what if, uh, look, this is, this is not going to get me very far with any of your listeners or whatever, but, uh, 
if somebody came at me right now and offered me three first rounders, I'm sorry, man. I think I think I betrayed them. And and I, I've said it before, and people have attacked me for it. But you know, you got to look at your franchise as a whole. I, I I you know, you got the number two pick in the draft, and you're taking a running back. I think you could have sold that pick for a fortune. Now again, don't get me wrong. I love this dude. He's incredible. He's better than Z. He's the best running back in the league, if you ask me. But it's about your franchise. Without a doubt, one help. You saw what he did last year when he was injured. Still about a thousand yards. Franchise, and that's what people have to understand. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. If somebody, I mean, it's not going to happen. Just because, once again, going back to the value of the running back position, twenty million dollars. I don't think any running back is worth that much, no matter how good you are. Not necessarily. And then you have a team. Let's say you have a team like I don't know. Throw out a throw out a good team. Uh, all right, all right. Let's go with Saints. Saints. Let's say the Saints didn't have a running back. Let's just say they didn't have a running back, okay? And you have Breeze, mm-hmm. you have Tommy, you have all these guys, okay, that could lead you to the promised land. And the only thing you need is a Saquon Barkley. You paying the twenty million a year? Are we in the situation when Saquon comes no, on or ring the Super Bowl? Situation right now. <laughs> I'm talking about the Saints. I'm not talking about oh. Barkley. Meaning, meaning, I'm not sitting here telling you that Barkley's the one making this arrangement. I'm saying the Saints. What I what I mean is, you said that no running back is worth that, and I'm telling you that if I'm a mm-hmm. running back away from making it to the Super Bowl or winning the Super Bowl, and Barkley is available, not only am I giving you those first rounders. I'm paying that twenty million a year. Oh, You're then right. Barkley is going to the same. So, so you can't say that a running back is not worth that because at some point they are. All right, I will rephrase it then. At least to the Giants, in my opinion, I is I, not I, worth I'm that. A, I, what about I, I that? agree with you. I think right now Barkley, who again is a franchise player, should not be the Giants franchise player. mm Hmm. And that's why, and mm, Jesus, I just listen to put a, just to put a close on the topic. I can, I think we can both say we love Barkley, but we hope he comes on at a reasonable price to stay on the Giants. And hopefully it will not affect, listen, I agree with you though. I got to get back to that three. If that were to happen, I don't see it happening, but if somebody were to come up to me with three first rounders, yeah, I I, wouldn't go, I wouldn't let him go for two. But I let him go for three. So let's get on to the actual franchise, or at least who should be the franchise, Daniel Jones. Let me know what you're so, thinking. So I was with Daniel Jones the night before the draft. Uh, we were at the hotel, and I said to him, I was like, you know, you're going to look so good in Giants blue. And we laughed and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I would love to go there. I would love to go there. I said to him, I was like, look, you, you're going to go there, but you're not going at six. <laughs> And I, I meant that. <laughs> I seriously meant that I said that. And, and, and everybody gives me a hard time about my reaction for the draft. I don't, it's, my reaction had nothing to do with Daniel Jones. My reaction had everything to do with the Giants not getting Josh Allen. It had nothing to do with Daniel Jones. Mm-hmm. I like Daniel Jones. I was the one that was very vocal about, please, please don't get Haskins. I think Haskins is going to be fat and out of shape and out of football in a couple of years. A.K. Jamarcus Russell. Out of shape mentally, too. You already see what's yep, happening over I there in Washington. Jamarcus Russell written all over that he, face. But but I, I, I wanted Daniel Jones. Now, my thoughts on him? I don't know who the hell said he didn't have a strong arm because he does. And I think Daniel Jones, I think he's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah he got fumbleitis. Yes, he does. And he, his ass better fix that. But other than that, he's Daniel Jones is good. Daniel Jones is good. He was, can you imagine, listen, another hypothetical, maybe you don't like it. If he started all 16 games for the Giants, just in what, like 12 or 14, he had amazing stats for a rookie. He played right. amazingly for a rookie. In an offensive system that, in my opinion, held him back at times, he still performed and outperformed it. And he does have the fumbling issues, but that can be fixed. Lamar Jackson, his rookie right. year, had and the fumbling issues. And now you look issues. at what you and I are talking about right here, and we're basically saying to each other, if he's the franchise, then we're bringing this conversation back to the original, and that's the draft. And 
Do we finally give mm-hmm. Daniel Jones what we couldn't give Manning towards the end? Do we give Daniel Jones a brand new offensive tackle? Do we give Daniel Jones a brand new center? Do we let him sit back there and, and, and pick apart defenses? There's a lot to say about going for that tackle, man. And it's all because we have Daniel Jones. Listen, DJ, that's one of the reasons offensive tackle for me is my top priority because I want to protect them. I don't want to see the beginning of his career go like the end of Eli's. I want to see the beginning of his career yes, go like the beginning yes, of Eli's yes. when he had a when he had an offensive line, yeah. when he had a core around him, all of that I want to see happen. And part of that, you know, of course, part of the beginning of Eli's career was that they did have a defense in place already, which is why, when, you know, it's one of the reasons people say go Simmons. But once again, man, bringing Simmons on doesn't fix the defense. It's a step in the right direction. It doesn't fix it, though. Bringing on an offensive lineman I has agree. the potential to fix that offensive line. And now with DJ, man, so... You thought, no, well, do you no, think no, he no. was going 17? You know, I when he was, spoke to him I that did, night, or did you think we were getting him in the second round? Um, but uh, according to everything that we've read, it wasn't going to happen. I did think. was the, I think it was the um, Broncos or somebody were looking for him. According to multiple, multiple reports, he wouldn't have been there. So you know what they say. If you want your franchise quarterback, you go get him. Um, Edelman will be uh, put in the Hall of mm-hmm. Fame one day and. We'll all shut our mouths because he picked Daniel Jones. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But um, but as of right now, uh, mm-hmm. I think it's a good pick. I didn't want him at six. I want him at 17. I didn't want Saquon Barkley, but I'll take him. So, you know, listen, you and I don't get the big bucks. Okay? If we got the big bucks. You know, yeah. Okay, we There's a reason we're out here sitting on our so, couches. With that said, you know, we're giant fans for life. Whatever they do, we're going to be there no matter what. It's called fandom. We don't give up. And I'll tell you right now, if you ain't going to starve with us, then you ain't going to eat with us either. Exactly. I will say this. What you just said was a great way to end off the podcast because I got to get back to my online classes in a few minutes. But to end it off, what are you, well, what are you I, expecting I'm, for the Giants reality, this year? My friend. So I'm always going playoff run no matter what. I'm always going Super Bowl. I do think the Giants, for some odd reason, they're going to get their double du- double digit wins, and, uh, and 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 they're going to get into the playoffs this year, guaranteed. I'm guaranteeing it. Guarantee it. Well, you know what? I can't even be mad with that. Uh, who would be mad with a prediction like that from somebody that's seen it all throughout the years? And like he said. It's ride or die team, and right now you got to ride through the hard times. So thank you so much, LPG, for coming on, man. Been a great pleasure. Had a great talk with you. Would love to have you back on in the future. No doubt. I really appreciate uh, Once again, man, just thank you so much. It was great. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.